you're not dreaming. No, this isn't a virtual reality game. I'm actually sitting here making this video for you guys. What? Um, yeah, it's been a few months. Um, a lot of you guys have been concerned, rightfully so, because like, why did I just disappear for two months? I just needed to take a break. I was just taking a mental health break, get my mind right, and I feel really good. I feel really good. I've honestly missed you guys a lot. I've missed this. I've missed just sitting down and just talking to you guys and like sharing my experiences. It's been a crazy summer for me. That's kind of why I've been MIA, but whatever. At the beginning of the summer, I did go on a European trip, and that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Finally! Fucking finally. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Dublin, Ireland. I went to Dublin for a week with Caitlin's family, because they're all super Irish, and they have family in Ireland, and Caitlin invited me this year, which, what a blessing. I feel really honored that they, <laughs> that they decided to take me on these trips. So this is the lineup for the next three videos. So this video is gonna be all about Dublin, Ireland. It's a family fun adventure. This lineup is so ridiculous, like I don't know why. It just makes no sense. And then the next video is gonna be Amsterdam. Ha! Ah. So we're departing from the family and now we're on our own. Just two girlies in the craziest city ever. And then the third video is <laughs> literally the next craziest place ever. We go to Ibiza. I'm not even joking, this is another reason why I was kind of MIA for a lot of the time. After Ibiza, I had to do like intensive therapy. You'll see why. It was a little traumatic, <laughs> um, but really fun. But like there was some really like awful shit that happened, but we'll get into that in the third video. But this one is just gonna be <laughs> the family friendly Dublin trip. Everybody sit back, relax, go get a snack, go order some Taco Bell. If you're gonna do that, then pause this. Order something sweet, order a little McFlurry, I don't know. Crack open a brewski, load it up, whatever you guys do, or just be sober. Why can't we just be sober and do things? We so can. I hope you guys enjoy it. It was really fun. And before we get into it, we do have a sponsor. So take it away, Sarah. All right, today's video is sponsored by White Fox. Woo, 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 woo. So yeah, White Fox sent me some fabulous pieces and I kind of want to try them on for you guys, get your opinion. So that's what we're going to do today. And I mostly picked out dresses this time because I feel like I just don't have enough dresses for going out. And I've been kind of recycling the same dresses. So I just needed some new flashy stuff. Up, you know, but then also I got a few t-shirts like this one. This one's so cute. I love this color I love burgundy matches my lipstick. This is one of my favorite colors ever So I got a small so it's pretty tight on me I love it. It's so comfortable and it's stretchy and I got a few more shirts just like this So I'll put those on right now and then we'll try on some dresses I got some shoes too and some purses White Fox Boutique also stock White Fox Swim and White Fox Active. Also, Afterpay is available for all U.S., Australian, and New Zealand customers. And there's also Express worldwide shipping. Let's put it on, baby. All right, we can't do a fashion show without some funky music, so you know I had to play some funky stuff. Um, this is the same shirt that I was wearing in the previous frame. I really love this color. It's like a forest green with some pink trim, very stretchy. And this one's called the Peaceful Joy Baby Tee in forest green. Now this is a brown t-shirt, same material, very stretchy. It says white fox on the front. I love a brown on brown, you know? They might not be the same color of brown, but you know what? We love a brown on brown. And my hair is brown, brown on brown on brown on brown. And this one's called On the Courts Baby Tea in Mocha. And you guys, this dress, oh my God. I love this dress. It is so comfortable. It's so stretchy. I'm really trying to get into like more form fitting dresses. You know, I'm only young and hot once. So I'm really trying to take advantage of that. So I'm trying to wear more form fitting stuff. Get out of my shell. And I feel like this is a great start for one of those dresses. And this dress is called the Field of Daisies Knit Mini Dress in Chocolate Daisy. We love it. Next up, we have this fabulous shirt. Are you kidding? There's ruffles. And also if you lift it up, it comes with like a little tube top thing so you don't show your nips through it. And I love that. 
I love that it came with that and the back is really nice and it's just such a flattering little top. And I love this color on me and everyone says that red is my color so I'm going with it. Here's me dancing to some funky music. Whoa, no peeking. <laughs> You're crazy. And this is called Like a Lady Top Red. Okay, oh my God, who is this pop star? It's just me. So I love this dress. It is so freaking cool. It is so shimmery. I genuinely feel like a pop star. Nobody can tell me no in this dress. I feel so confident whenever I wear this to the club. I get so many compliments on it. You can see me from across the freaking room. And people get intimidated by me in this one. And I like that. This is called the Running Late Embellished Crop in chocolate for the shirt. And then the skirt is called Pop Prism Embellishment Mini Skirt Chocolate. Now this dress is my absolute favorite. Are you kidding me? It is so darling, this is so my vibe, okay? It's stretchy, it is so comfortable, and it's very supportive on my little cha-chas. Chi-chis? I don't know. It's form-fitting, but it's stretchy, it's comfortable, I can twerk, I can dance. I can do it all in this thing. And I really like that the pattern is kind of a tie-dye. And this one is called Give It Back Mini Dress Motion Floral. Now guys, check out this top. Are you kidding me? Look at these little bell-bottom sleeves, all right? It sparkles, it shines. I wouldn't wear this with these pants. I just pulled out the first black pants that I saw in my closet. I love this. This also makes me feel like a pop star. I can wear this to a date night. Ooh, I'm not dating anyone. But if I were, I would wear this. And this is called the Night Lights Embellished Long Sleeve Top in Black. And this is the Becca shoulder bag in black. And this purse is just everything. It can go with everything. There's a zipper. It holds a lot in there. You can't go wrong with a nice little black bag. But then guess what? I have another little black bag. And this one is a little bit more fancy. There's a buckle, whoa. It just pops open like that. And then there's a zipper and this one's great too. And that bag is called the Dion large shoulder bag in black. And then I have these Mattia platform slides in black. These are so darn comfortable to nation. Like I'm not kidding. Whoa, okay, falling over. Um, they're so comfortable. They're perfect for when you're like going to the pool. Great airport shoes. <laughs> like, they're just so comfy. You can truly wear these anywhere. So yeah, guys, go to White Fox, check out some really cute stuff that they have. And you can use my discount code, Sarah Basca, for 15% off site-wide X sale and collabs. Thank you so much, White Fox, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into it. All right, you guys, so we're about to embark on this Dublin trip. I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea what to pack too, because I'm going to three different climates. I didn't even bother filming myself because I was having a panic attack. Not actually, but I was just running around. My blood pressure was through the roof. And because I was running around like a sheep without a shepherd, I didn't sleep at all for my flight to Boston. And Caitlin was already in Boston at her family's house. And then we were all gonna go from Boston to Ireland. So I'm done packing at like three in the morning. I hop in an Uber and I go to LAX. I'm tired, I'm cranky, but I'm excited. There's a lot of emotions swirling around my spirit. It was a long flight and it was probably the worst flight I've ever been on. And the footage you're about to see is Caitlin picking me up from the Boston airport and me talking about my flight experience. Caitlin just picked me up. I just picked her the fuck up. That was the most miserable flight of my entire life. <laughs> I need you to tell everyone what just happened. Um, Not that I really want to hear it again, but like. Oh my God. Basically, I get on the plane. It's 6.30 in the morning. Didn't sleep at all last night. So I'm like, okay, I'll get a few hours on this plane, you know? I get to my seat, I'm the window seat. And then there's this guy who sits in the middle seat and he's kind of hot. So I'm like, okay. I was about to say, was he hot as a joke? Because I really thought no, he wasn't. He was kind of hot. And so I was like, ooh, okay, this will be fun. I got my shows queued up. And then like 20 minutes into the flight, he just starts ripping ass so badly. I knew it was him because I could see in the corner of my eye him like lifting up his legs. <laughs> he 
insane behavior. Like literally lipping, like did not give a damn about me or the girl next to him. Did not care. And he did that every 15 minutes and it was the most foul smell I've ever smelled in my life. It was so gross. I was just literally leaning by the window going like this. Oh my God. And he would not stop. And then he fell asleep. And then I just feel like this pressure in my oh abdomen my and I'm like you have to be joking oh. and this man is literally just poking into me and I'm like ah and he's man spreading oh. so his legs are like this and he's in the middle seat so he's just taking up so much space and he's poking into me he's farting every 15 minutes it's horrible <laughs> legs dangling in the air <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> and then I was like okay I have to and so I turn to poke him on the shoulder and I look down and both of his hands are in his pants. Oh my God. Like fully, he's just fully grabbing his dick while he's sleeping. Just thinking he's in his living room, farting. <laughs> Touching it yourself is just, I, like there's no fucking words for that, dude. Like what? <laughs> like this man no, no consideration for any of the women next to him. <laughs> And the other girl on the other side was my age too, and we were just like, what the fuck? Oh, no, so she fully saw everything that was going on too. Oh yeah, it was so uncomfortable. And then I poked him and he was like, oh, sorry. And then he takes his hands out of his pants and then they get up and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom really quick. I open up the bathroom door and it just reeks of asparagus. Cause someone didn't flush the toilet and someone was really dehydrated on that plane. and. Caitlin, the stench. <laughs> I had a gag attack. I could not stop gagging. And I was just trying not to breathe out of my nose. And then I like got a little bit in my nose and then I threw up. Like how much did you throw up? Not a lot. But even still anything coming out of your mouth <laughs> in that moment is insane. It was just like acid. But like, oh, oh even worse. Oh my God, it was disgusting. Because that's not even like a throw up that like you can hold back. Like if you're throwing up acid, like that had to come out for some reason. Like there's no stopping that. You can't swallow that. Like that's coming out of you. I know. Like it came <laughs> from the depths of my stomach. <laughs> like it was so foul. And then I went back to my seat and I was just leaning against the window being like, if this dude farts one more time, I'm going to puke, dude. Oh. Like, I was just in terror that he was going to fart again. <laughs> I would have reported him at that point. I, I was like, thinking about it, dude. I, I was low-key gonna tell you, like, Delta is the fucking best. Like, if you went up and complained to some, like, really nice, like, lady, I feel like she'd be like, all right, let's find you a different seat, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. But it was a full flight. Oh, fuck. So I just was like, okay, I have like an hour and a half left. I can, I can get through this. But yeah, that was that was my flight. That's so bad. The fact that you told me that you threw up because someone smelled like asparagus, and then I was like, you know what I should go get right now? Spinach and artichoke dip. And then, <laughs> no, that's literally what I went and ate, which is like is not what I should like be craving after you told me that you just threw up and like the scent of asparagus. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go sit outside in the sun and eat this up and I never ordered that anywhere but like I just started framing that which is disgusting <laughs> like I literally I saw this football player's farts next to me you're like wait actually oh spinach dip in the sun <laughs> in the hot sun <laughs> by myself oh my god like, he smells that bad well I'm literally trying not to throw up next to him you're just enjoying some spinach dip in the sun inspired by the scent <laughs> I'm glad that I can inspire you, Caitlin. Oh wait, it's actually right behind us. It's in this. No, it is not. I forgot that I got it. Oh, she's not lying. Oh, she's wait, not I lying. I totally forgot. Ew, I'm gonna Dude, literally it's so go. good. It's so good. Honestly, like I think I'm gonna leave a yell for you. Like it's one of the best tips I've ever had. You're welcome. Thank the guy next to me. I should have got his name. You really should have. <laughs> I'm gonna go on the missed connections thing on Craigslist. Hey, who was the guy that was farting nonstop next to me on this flight? Thank you for pointing me in the right direction of some incredible spinach. But yeah, so guys, this is the start of 
<laughs> our trip. Start of something new. Start of something new. I'm in Boston. Me the last too. time I was here, me and Caitlin got in a huge fight. <laughs> and I almost ripped her ponytail off in the middle of the street. It, she actually did. That's why I don't have one in my I'm still bald from it, but it's okay. It was, it was rightfully deserved. <laughs> Good times. I'm planning on keeping my hair this time around. <laughs> and then we weren't friends for seven months. <laughs> Please God, we have a good Boston experience this time. Now we're back and now I'm going on a family trip with her. <laughs> with her family. Dublin. <laughs> wow, we really turned that around, didn't we? <laughs> we really did. We're gonna sit in this fucking god-awful traffic now. Woo! This rocks. And if you're probably wondering, yeah, I should have reported that man to the flight attendants for having his hands down his pants. I don't know why I didn't, honestly. You're correct if you're thinking that. I should have done that. Learn from me, people. <laughs> if there's a man sitting next to you with his hands down his pants, you need to report that, all right? Okay. So then we drive all the way to Caitlin's house and we have one whole day to kind of get our shit together before we leave the next morning. We spent the whole day getting our nails done. I got a spray tan. <laughs> It said Justin. Oh. <laughs> Big as my head. <laughs> That's the large. <laughs> Not believe you're an Elizabeth. <laughs> If she actually goes and lays on the pillow, I will laugh. Oh, she just loves Sarah. <laughs> Men! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Men! <laughs> Kaylin got me some of these awesome muffins. Apparently these are the best muffins in Boston and she grew up on these muffins and they're the size of my head. And I was so blessed because I came downstairs and there was these giant yummy muffins for me. I came downstairs and Kaylin surprised me with muffins. <laughs> it's the real Massachusetts experience now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. These are as free as my head. <laughs> it's right here. Oh my god. Where? <laughs> it was literally just sitting right there. <laughs> and then we head on over to the airport, baby. We're with the whole fam. We're getting checked in. And we're getting on the plane. I got my passport. I literally double checked that I had my passport 15 times on the way to the airport because I did not want to be that bitch. I want to be invited again, cannot be an inconvenience whatsoever on this trip. And my job on this vacation was to keep the vibes high. Family vacations can be stressful for a lot of people. Traveling with your family members as adults, some deep rooted things in your subconscious from childhood can start to bubble up. There's just a lot of things that can happen. So I was trying to be the vibe curator I guess. So as the plane is descending into Ireland, I look out my window. It's so green. Why did nobody tell me? The Ireland was so green it was gorgeous i was just looking at my window and i was like it was just all green not one inch of brown not one inch of any other color just green already meeting my expectations it's pretty freaking green i felt like a little leprechaun <laughs> I wanted to do an Irish jig as soon as I got off that aircraft. I was really feeling the Irish roots that I do not have. 
Do I? I don't think so. Maybe, I don't know. Am I Irish? I don't know, maybe I am, because I was really feeling spiritually connected. And then yeah, we got off the plane, walking through the airport, get in the car, and then we drive to our Airbnb. I guess I, I didn't really ask Caitlin where we were staying. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I think for some reason I thought we were staying in a hotel or just something of that vibe. No, nope. We pull up to, what is the stadium called? The Aviva Stadium, which is where Taylor Swift was gonna be performing in a few weeks. It's the stadium, you know what I'm saying? It's the stadium of Dublin. And we pull up and I was like, what? Why are we going to a concert? Are we going to a rugby match? Like, what are we doing team? Because I smell like cheese and I would like to take a shower first. So we pull up to the Aviva Stadium and then there's this alleyway that the car drives down and I'm like, what? And there's a giant gate right next to the Aviva Stadium, like a gate to a house and the car parks right there. And I was like, huh? Is what? Why? What? And we get out of the Uber. They punch in the little gate code. We're staying at this beautiful Airbnb right next to the Aviva Stadium. What? Is this all for us? Okay. <laughs> what? It looks like the Incredibles house. <laughs> I couldn't even believe it. I was shocked. I felt like the weekend. I don't know why the weekend popped into my brain, but I did channel the weekend. Yes, the pop star. It just felt like an environment that the weekend should be in. Like, where is he? Where's Abel? Caitlyn was in shambles because she's a Swifty and I guess Taylor Swift is literally performing at that stadium in two weeks. And she was like, oh my God, I wish we had this for the show. <laughs> I can literally jump into the stadium. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a blast. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> Shout out to Caitlyn's family for getting that for us. And then me and Caitlyn called dibs on the biggest room. Well, we asked her mom and her aunt if they wanted it and they said, no, you girls can have it. So we were like, okay. So me and Caitlyn snagged the primary bedroom and look at this shower. This was our shower. I felt like I was in a rainforest every morning. Oh, and let me mention, so the people that are on this trip, it's me, Caitlin, Caitlin's mom, Caitlin's two brothers, Caitlin's aunt, and Caitlin's cousin, so the aunt's son, all right? And the main reason why we were going on this trip is because Caitlin's brother, the middle kid, Caitlin's the oldest, so then Brian, he just graduated college, and then the youngest, his name's Aiden, he just graduated high school, so this was kind of like a graduation present for the two of them, and also, we were celebrating that Aiden, the youngest, he can actually drink his first beer, like his first sip of alcohol. And it was gonna be in Ireland with his family. He's never had a lick of alcohol. Such a good kid. So once me and Caitlin got our shit together, put it in our room, kind of just settled in, everybody collectively, we were like, we need to take a nap, all of us. You know, we just had a crazy travel day, did not sleep a wink on that plane. And we're exhausted, which kind of sucked because we felt like we were kind of wasting the day away, but it was also only like 10.30 in the morning when we got into the Airbnb. So we were like, okay, let's just sleep for a few hours and then we'll wake up, go to dinner, whatevsies. Caitlin and I finally get in bed. We get all cozy. We're like, wow, we're in Ireland. This is lit. We're in the biggest bedroom. This nap is going to freaking hit. Me and Caitlin just snuggle up and we're like, good night, queen. She's like, good night, queen close the eyes it's pitch black in the room because we got the blackout curtains and we finally fall asleep Ooh, 
It's so good. I'm dreaming about the hot Irish man that I'm gonna meet in a few days. I'm dreaming about doing an Irish jig in a pub with this said Irish man. I'm dreaming about braiding his beard hair. I'm dreaming about frogging through a field of four-leaf clovers with this hottie Irish man. Oh god, my, my eyeballs were just... Activated. Like the REM sleep was going absolutely buck wild insane. Like, I was pretty much having wet dream after wet dream about this potential Irish hottie. Um, but <laughs> all good things have to come to an end. In this case, an abrupt end that I was not ready for. Probably 20 minutes after I fell asleep, I get shaken awake by the sound of a power drill. And not from a distance. It's right in my ear. Not actually, but it's right near my ear. Me and Caitlin literally sprung up so quick. It was like a jump scare. We were so frightened. Cause it sounded like someone had a literal chainsaw right outside of our door and they were about to bust through and kill us. Why is there a chainsaw right outside of my room? Who in the family needs a power drill, huh? And there's no men in this, well, Caitlyn's little brothers and cousin, but like that made me more nervous. I'm like, did they die already? And now they're coming to me and Caitlyn because our room was like the farthest away from everything. So I'm like, oh, great. We're next, we're going to die. <laughs> me and her were literally like under the covers, like, <laughs> like shaking, quivering. And we're in a different country. I'm like, really, you have to die in Ireland? I guess that's kind of cool, but it's like, now? I didn't even get to go to a visa yet. So after we're like quivering under the blankets, we finally hear male voices, which didn't help the terror. And they sounded like they were power drilling the door out to the balcony that's right next to our door, like right outside of our door. Cause apparently that door is broken and you can't go outside. But I was like, wait, what now? Like, did anybody know that they were supposed to be in here? Why didn't Caitlin's mom and aunt warn us? Because they're also trying to take a nap. Like what is going on here? So yeah, they're just drilling. And Caitlin and I are so pissed off because we are so tired. We just fell asleep. And there's just no way for us to even go back to sleep. I tried to put my AirPods in, noise cancellation, still could hear it. We just wanted to cry. And then finally, Caitlin texts her aunt and she's like, what the hell is going on? And then the aunt responds and then she was like, I am so pissed off, you guys. We had no idea that they were gonna come in here. They just walked through the front door. They just helped themselves, walked up the stairs. Caitlin's mom and aunt thought that it was me and Caitlin. We were like, why would we have a power tool? <laughs> I don't even know if you can bring that abroad, can you? Just in case we break something, you never know. So we were like, no, it's not us. Like, who are these grown men? Caitlin's aunt, oh my God, she went buck wild. We heard her marching up the stairs and she's like yelling at these guys. She was like, how dare you guys just barge in here? No one gave us a heads up. No one told us that you guys were coming. Go away. We're trying to take a nap. And the guys were like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then she goes back downstairs and me and Caitlin were like, yes, queen. We're just laying there. Okay, Caitlin's aunt Sue just kicked them out, I guess. Thank God. I just texted her and asked if that's what just happened. But I should pray. Oh, yeah. Did you hear her? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. She fully kicked them out. <laughs> Let's go, Sue. Let's go, Sue. <laughs> to go to bed. Me too. 10 minutes goes by. 20 minutes goes by. 30 minutes goes by. 40 minutes goes by. There's just no 
way. You're so tired. <laughs> like you can't make this up, dude. And they're very much here. They very much showed up. We text Caitlin's aunt again and we're like, hey. So then we hear the footsteps coming back up and then she starts screaming at them again. And we were like, period, Sue. Is she yelling at them? Go, Sue. What'd she say? and then we finally took a nap and we didn't wake up till like 7 p.m. We woke up and everybody was gone and then they texted in the group chat and said that they all went to dinner. They all went to a restaurant and we were like, fuck. I guess her cousin was like banging on the door while we were asleep and we didn't wake up. We didn't even hear it. So then we ordered Nando's and I've never had Nando's. And I was so excited because I remember Niall Horan would always talk about Nando's in the One Direction days. What does Niall Horan? Order at Nando's. How long have we got? <laughs> I think we could be here a while. Should you have gone to Nando's? Yes. I'll tell the rest of the chicken up. Right, where are we going? Nando's. Nando's will be okay. What's your favourite thing to get at Nando's? Uh, chicken wrap. So uh, I heard you're a big fan of Nando's, what's your favorite thing? Oh, and I always wanted to try it. It was so good. It was truly like the best chicken I have ever had. And the sauce? I can't remember what the sauce was called. I think it was just like the original Nando sauce. Absolutely fuego. Then they came home and then we kind of just went to bed. So yeah, the first day there wasn't that eventful, but the Nando's was fire. So then we wake up in the morning and we're gonna go meet up with Caitlin's Irish family. And I was really excited to meet them. So Caitlin's mom and aunt took us to this really beautiful, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like this really beautiful area on the water. There's like pretty sailboats. There's a bunch of cool shops and restaurants and stuff. And so we were just gonna go over there, shop around. There were people kayaking. There were some seagulls. pictures with Caitlin's aunt Sue. Don't know why, I just really loved her. <laughs> And I just wanted a picture with her by the water. And then we went to this restaurant, met up with her Irish family, got some food, got a brewski. And then we went to this really cute bar. I don't remember what it was called, but there was a giant shark in the front. We look to the mountains. We don't care if it's only a dream. Nothing is really wild. We got some more brewskis and we sat at this little picnic table and we gabbed and we chatted and I really got to know Caitlin's cute, not cute, well, you know what I mean, like precious cousins. Found out they were gamers. <laughs> they knew about Life is Strange. So, oh, if you know about Life is Strange and we just met, 
oh, I'll talk your ear off, sweetie. So I was really bonding with Caitlyn's Irish cousins. And then me and Caitlyn's Irish aunt bought these cute little mushroom necklaces. They're like crochet necklaces that this one woman was crocheting right in front of us. She was going ham. And then me and her aunt saw the little mushroom ones and we were like, oh, it kind of looks like a dick. <laughs> she said it first. I was thinking it, but then once she said it, I was like, okay, you're cool. Cause I was thinking that too. And then yeah, we just spent the rest of that day shopping around. Is it super colorful or is it just like flex bro? <laughs> no, literally. Like I cannot tell. And then in order to get back to our Airbnb, since it was kind of far away, we had to take a train. Here is a sequence of photos of me on the train, finding out that one of my ex-boyfriends just got engaged to a porn star. That's totally, like, I love porn stars, I love sex workers, but like, it was just so, so random. Like, I didn't even know he was dating anybody. I don't really keep up with him anymore, but it was just crazy because like, we went to a Christian school together. And so I'm just like, oh, it was just so jarring. I was just scrolling through Instagram and I just, oh my God, my ex is engaged to a porn star. And I was so startled by that. I dropped my entire coffee all over my pants. So yeah, that was pretty shocking. What a way to start my day. I hope it all works out. She seems lovely. So then we get off the train and we're walking to our Airbnb and we notice that there's a herd of people walking down our street towards the stadium. Just herds and herds and herds. Just a bunch of sheep waddling down the alley. <laughs> We were like, what is going on? Is the weekend performing? Was my intuition correct? And so we asked one of the people that were walking and they're like, no, the big rugby games today. <laughs> huh? There's a rugby game? There's a rugby game today, right there? Let's go. Let's get it. Absolutely. This is our house. This is the game. Swift is performing here in two weeks. I can't even talk about it. And this is our- <laughs> That's sick. This is so funny. What an authentic Irish experience. Going to a rugby match. That's like the most Irish you can get, right? So the whole family was like, absolutely freaking lootly Let's go inside, freshen up a little bit, buy the tickets, and let's head over there. Hell yeah. I have no idea the rules of rugby. If you put a gun to my head and told me, define rugby and how do you play? I don't know. I just knew that there was going to be some hot men. Hot men in short shorts. With large thighs. Running around. and touching each other. So I was like, let's freaking, <laughs> let's go. I was like, is this where I'm gonna find my hot Irish hottie? And everything was just kind of aligned in my head. I was like, oh my God, universe, I freaking hear you loud and clear. This is it. You gotta go after the athletes, duh. And the athletes here are the rugby players, doy. So once we're done freshening up, the whole herd gets together and we just walk a few feet to the stadium. It was so lit.
tears were making me so incredibly nervous. <laughs> And I had no idea what rugby even was, but actually watching them, it's so physical and it's just, oh my God, so much contact. It's so aggressive. Ooh. <laughs> Bodies are so nice, very, very attractive. I was squirming. I was squirming. <laughs> hot he was so hot you can't really tell because you just see his back and his butt but oh my god he was so hot i literally was like that's him oh my god that's my irish king what the fuck is your name and that environment was so lit like oh my god the irish folk they get down with rugby they love that shit it was so electric <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah! <laughs> Did he just wave you? <laughs> what? Men who wear skirts. Yes. Connor gets it. <laughs> Did he just wave to you? <laughs> There's hair on it? Wait, where? Right there. Oh. <laughs> no, you need to try a bite. <laughs> It was just so fun. I felt so like in the culture. It was really cool. And then after the game was over, we just walk a few feet to the Airbnb. Love it. We're just on the roof, people watching, just watching all of these herds just walk by our Airbnb. <laughs> Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, it's we're the shit. <laughs> let's go, let's go! Yeah. Woo! I know. <laughs> I, I got here the other day. I don't know. Wait, don't we're know not from here. Yet. I still don't know the rules. Wait, what is rugby? <laughs> Having a laugh. Having a chat. Having a crack. A crake? Having a crake. I don't even know what that means. What the crake? <laughs> what does that mean? And then as we go into our room and we're kind of decompressing, and we also don't really know what we're gonna do next. We don't really have plans. We might go to dinner. And I go on Instagram and I'm just like, I'm gonna check my message requests because the girlies know I'm in Ireland. Let's see if anyone says anything, if anyone has a suggestion. And this one girlie sent me a message. And um, just roll the clip. Shout out to my girly Claire. No, not Claire. What? Why did I say Claire? Shout out to my girly Sarah, who just let me know that Theo Vaughn is in Dublin. Oh, that's the wrong tampon size. 
<laughs> so we're about to see Theo Vaughn in Dublin. And Caitlin needs to change her tampon. Got to get this out of here right now. And we have to leave right now. Thank God I saw that DM because he goes on at 8 and it's almost 7.30. It's 15 minutes away. Why is Theo Vaughn in Dublin? Is this a sign from the universe? I don't know. But we're gonna go see him and we're so excited. We just saw a rugby game. That was really hot. That was really hot. Now we're seeing Theo Vaughn in Dublin. Bye. Yeah, so <laughs> Theo Vaughn, he's having a show. And if you guys know, me and Theo Vaughn have had history. Not really. I went to his show in Phoenix once. Then we talked on Instagram for like a second, but that was the extent of that, okay. But like in my head, I was like, oh my God, my man but absolutely not. So I was like, oh my God, why is the universe always trying to pull me towards Theo Vaughn? This is getting ridiculous. Cause why the hell are we in Ireland? Ireland? Out of every country in the entire world, didn't make any sense. We buy tickets for that. Caitlyn's cousin, Connor is so stoked. Caitlyn's little brothers are so stoked. They're huge fans. And they just could not believe that we were going to his show. Like that was not a part of the plan. Caitlyn's mom and aunt stayed back. They were like, you kids go have fun not really our type of humor and we were like thank god <laughs> that would have been very uncomfortable so we were like okay kids night out let's get crazy <laughs> like who would have thought let's effing go fire me up <laughs> i'm gonna laugh my ass off <laughs> how we got here, <laughs> kind of. Well, I don't. <laughs> so it just makes sense. <laughs> this. Oh, wow. Okay. Why are we here? What? We're having a good time. The show was fantastic. We had a laugh, we had a crack uh, or crack. When we were done watching the show, we were on a high. Like the kids were like, let's freaking go. Because when, when the show was over, it was only like 10.30. Let's keep this going. We can't just go to bed. We have to ride this out. Let's just go home, chill for a sec, and then let's just go to the little bar right down the street. So we walked into the Airbnb. Caitlin's mom and aunt are sitting on the couch, like knitting. <laughs> so me and Caitlin go upstairs. We like fix our makeup, just freshening up, you know, listening to music, trying to pump ourselves up so we can go out, you know? I need to meet my Irish hottie. What if that rugby guy was at the bar? What if he was? And maybe not rugby hottie, any hottie. So I was like, let's freaking go. It's our first time actually going out in Ireland. And I've heard so many things about the nightlife in Ireland. It's freaking lit. Everybody is so fun. Everybody's so nice. And also that's another thing. Just in general, even during the daytime, Irish people are so sweet for no reason. Just walking down the street and like five Irish people will compliment you and say hello, start up a conversation with you. Like they're just so nice and it's so genuine too. So I was so excited to go to a bar and get lit with these Irish men. Like let's go. And women, Irish women too. We're walking down the street. We're like, let's go. We just had the best day. We just had the most Irish day ever. We went to a rugby game. We went to a comedy show and it was Theo Vaughn. And now we're going to an Irish pub. Let's go. We're about to have a great day. So we're walking down the street and we get to the pub. Let's go, Aiden! I never drank with your brothers before. This is amazing. I really haven't either. <laughs> what is happening? Why am I drinking with Aiden? I've never seen you and your brothers on so much. Why are we all drinking together? And why are you smiling with your brothers? <laughs> and not calling them names. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? Oh, he's a dad.
I guess while we were at the pub, I don't know when she did this, but when Caitlyn's drunk, she just has all the confidence in the world, I guess. She messaged Theo Vaughn and she said, where are you at? I'm in Ireland, just saw the show. Just where are you at? <laughs> and when she showed me that she sent him the message while we were at the pub, I was like, girl, He's not gonna, like, that's not happening. All the lights turn on and they're like, all right, get the fuck out. But then as the lights turn on, Caitlyn checks her phone and Theo responds and told us that him and his homies were, oh my God, what is that pub called? The really popular one? Oh, the Temple Bar. Yeah, so Theo Vaughn is at the Temple Bar. If you guys don't know what that is, it's like the most famous bar in Dublin. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it. And we still haven't even gone there yet. And that was on my bucket list. I'm like, we have to go to the Temple Bar at one point. And then I'm thinking, but what a cool way to like become friends with someone in the temple bar in Ireland and he doesn't even drink, but he was just there with his homies. So me and Caitlin were like, let's do it. But me and Caitlin weren't gonna tell her little brothers that we were going. It was just gonna be me, Caitlin and Connor. Cause we just didn't want the younger brothers to be there, you know? Cause they would fangirl. We're like, we gotta play it cool, you know? We're all walking home. Me and Caitlin have this secret. Me, Caitlin and Connor are like, oh my God. We get back to the Airbnb. We say goodnight to the brothers. We're like, good night guys. That was so fun. And then me, Connor and Caitlin were like, okay, all right, we got this. We're doing it. This is gonna be so fun. Just, we have to be so quiet. We have to be so quiet, okay? Me and Caitlin change. We put on a different outfit because we just wanted to look cute. Connor's putting on a different, we're just freshening up. You know, we're like, <laughs> we're like chugging White Claws. We're like, <laughs> And then Caitlin's like, okay, I'm gonna call the Uber, but we have to wait until the Uber is right outside of our Airbnb so we can open up the door really quick and just run, you know? I felt like I was in high school. Like I literally felt like I was like sneaking around, like going to a boy's house. Like it was crazy. It was so exhilarating. I have not felt that feeling. I'm not kidding since I was 17. Oh, it was so electric. Oh my God, the adrenaline and like, oh my God, we can't get caught. Like, <laughs> She calls the Uber. Me, Connor, and Caitlin are like, the Uber finally shows up and we're like, okay, we have to be so quiet. And so we sneak down the stairs like little mice. And we're like tiptoeing through the living room, trying to get to the front door. And then as Caitlin grabs the door handle, and as she's pulling it really, cause it's squeaky. She's like pulling it. Oh, so dramatic. What's gonna happen? I wish I could tell you. I guess my camera stopped recording. Literally right at the best part. So this is me just breaking it down <laughs> what happened. I really don't want to go into the whole thing. But basically we get to the door. We open it up really slowly. We're creeping outside. And then Caitlin gets a text. Caitlin gets a text from Theo, and she got that text and failed to read the other text from Theo 20 minutes before. <laughs> so he sent a text message 20 minutes ago, but he sent another one. And the text 20 minutes ago says, hey, are you guys on your way? Because the bar is gonna close soon. Guess what we were doing? Me and Caitlin were in our room having a really deep emotional talk that was really unnecessary and we thought that we were only talking for like 10 minutes but I guess we I guess we were in that room for like an hour. Connor couldn't figure out what pants to wear and he was spiraling out of control because he just didn't know what pants to wear. So yeah, we didn't check our phone. And if we were to see that message and not cry to each other about our insecurities for an hour, then we would have gone right when he texted us that. Ah! Because the second message said, it said something like, damn, I think that I missed you guys or something. Nowhere's open right now and I have to leave early in the morning for my show. So I'm just gonna call it a night. <laughs> and also he doesn't drink either, so the bar closing, he was just over it. And I think that we stood the Yovan up on accident. We were so mad. We were so mad. So yeah, that's basically what happened in a nutshell. 
let's continue. Then Caitlin comes to bed and we were supposed to go kayaking in the morning. That's another thing. So the whole family is supposed to go kayaking. I was really excited for that. Kayaking in Ireland, count me in. That sounds magical if I'm being honest. <laughs> we were laying in bed and Caitlin is like looking at her messages with Theo Vaughn, just like. I turn over to Caitlin and I'm like, are we still going kayaking tomorrow? Like, so yeah, then we went to bed and then we woke up. It was raining so hard and Caitlin's mom knocks on the door and she kind of opens it and she was like, hey, we're still going kayaking if you guys want to come. And Caitlin was like, no. We're not gonna go. Caitlin's mom and the brothers and Irish family, they all went. It did not look fun. It still would have been cool to experience that. It was just not the vibe, just not the vibe. While, while the family was going kayaking, me and Caitlin were like, okay, let's just get up, do our makeup, and let's go into the city and go shopping, and let's explore Ireland. And so we're doing our makeup. The construction boys are back. They're power drilling it up right outside our window. Is this my Irish hottie? Why does he keep coming back in my life? But I guess they actually told the aunt that they were actually coming this time. So we knew they were coming, but hey boys. So yeah, and here's a little montage of me and Caitlin walking around Dublin, going shopping, skipping around. And it's such a beautiful city. It was so colorful and the architecture was awesome. And yeah. Caitlin, free beer and topless bartenders? Yeah. 
win. Let's fucking go. Can I also be topless? Seriously, same. I'm taking my top off right now. Would be like uh huh. Whoa, what the hell? Damn. So then after we went shopping, the, all the kids, we went out to the temple bar because I was like, okay guys, we couldn't go to the temple bar yesterday and hang out with Theo Vaughn. Can we please go tonight? And it was very unfortunate because Theo Vaughn was already gone. He was on to the next city. So we couldn't even invite him this time, but we ended up going anyway. And it was really cute. It was fun. It was really crowded though. It was fucking packed. It was kind of hard to move around in there. So we were kind of a little claustrophobic. So we weren't in there for that long. We just got a few drinks in there, but it was still really cool. It was really cool to just be in there. And I was like, oh my God, Niall. I just kept thinking about Niall the entire time. It was just so special, you know? Me and Caitlin were like, are there any clubs? Like, is there a place we can go dance? I guess there is one nightclub. It's called Copper, Copper something Jacks. But it literally looks like an old tavern. Like it looks like, it does not look like a nightclub from the outside. Just walking by this, you would think it's an old hotel or just like an old museum or something. So once we show up to the nightclub, we're like, oh my God, what? And we walk in. There was nobody in there. I'm not exaggerating. We were the only people there. And it was a pretty big club, a huge dance floor. There was a bunch of tables and shit. Like it was a proper nightclub with lights and loud music, but we were the only people there. And me and Caitlin were like, fuck, because Caitlin's little brother who just graduated high school, we wanted to take him to his first nightclub in Ireland. How special would that be? And then we get there and there's nobody there. And we were like, Aiden, this is not what it's usually like. And he's like, uh, yeah, this is cool, but it, it was so lame. I feel like it would be super, super fun if there were people there, but it was so awkward. We were just sitting at a table, just all looking at each other. We were like trying to dance, but it was just so awkward because the bartenders are just staring at us. There's like security guards all around the club with nobody to security. So they're just looking at us and we're just in the middle. Like <laughs> we just were being watched. After we were done with our drink, we were like, let's just, let's just call it a night. Let's just go home and let's just watch a movie. Let's get in our pajamas. Like fuck this shit. We had to take a picture in front of the nightclub anyway. <laughs> And then we get back to the Airbnb and then there's a basement in this Airbnb, okay? And this basement is funky. The wallpaper is silly and crazy. It's like jungle theme. It was not Irish at all. But there was a TV and nobody knew how to work it. It wouldn't turn on. That was really frustrating us this entire trip because all we wanted to do was just go in the basement and watch TV and the boys just could not figure it out. And they just kind of accepted that. But I am so stubborn. Once we got there, I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I need to watch a Disney movie right now. Like, I can't just end the night that way. I need to watch Moana. And they're like, we've tried, we've tried. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. And I was like, oh, oh, it's gonna work. Oh. <laughs> I'm over it, I've, I've done it. It doesn't work. No, it's not plugged in. <laughs> What's happening? Sarah's trying to do her best. Fiction. It's a little over. It's a serious failure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you turn that TV on, I. I if this serious. turns on, I'm gonna laugh so hard at you. She's behind the TV. Yeah. Were you ever behind the TV? No, because. <laughs> Shit. I was stood in front of the. She's like, hey, look at that red dot. Look at the red dot. The red dot's on. The red dot's on. Sarah, make it blue. <laughs> she made it blue. And it's still not on. Oh. Whoa. Uh. 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 Uh.
it. It's a it's a blank screen. <laughs> Give it a sec. We're building suspense, Connor. So yeah, I'm a freaking genius. And the boys were so threatened. They were like, oh my god, this girl, this girl figured it out. <sighs> Come on, you fools. It was embarrassing. I was like, you guys are so embarrassing. But then we had a really wholesome, sweet movie night. Well, it was wholesome at first. Because, you know, I didn't find my Irish hottie. I was very unlucky in love. Me and Connor, the cousin, were kind of like flirting here and there, like throughout the trip, but it was nothing crazy. And I was like, eh. Should I try to, should I try to make out with Connor? Like, who cares? And I'm bored. It would be kind of funny, silly. And we have been like kind of flirting this whole time. So I was down. <laughs> I asked Caitlin a few days before, like as a joke, I was like, yeah, what if I just make out with your cousin? And she's like, honestly, go for it. He'd probably be stoked. And I'm like, okay. So now I know in my subconscious that Caitlin wouldn't be annoyed or pissed at me. And since our trip was coming to a close, the next day was our last day. I was like, come on. And there was like a little bit of tension between us. So I was like, someone's gotta make the first move. It's not gonna be him. And we were all pretty drunk at this point. So I was like, it'll be silly. So we're all downstairs. We're watching Moana. Caitlin goes up. She's like, I'm really tired. I'm gonna go to bed. So Caitlin goes to bed and it's just me, Connor and the brothers. And we're almost done with Moana. But right when it's about to end, I was like, I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm really tired. And that was kind of like my, to Connor being like, I'm going to my room now. <laughs> but he's so stupid. He didn't pick up what I was throwing down. Of course not. He's a man. And then I hobble upstairs. I go into my room. I brush my teeth. The movie's almost gonna be done and then we can make out. Because I didn't wanna just like stay down there. I didn't know if the brothers were gonna stay down there. And Connor was staying in his own room. So I was like, we can just make out in your room. So I'm going to bed. You should go to bed too. Like, hello, are you dumb? I'm like laying in my bed, just kind of waiting for like anything. And then my phone vibrates and it's him. <laughs> Wait, I wanna, actually read it, it's so funny. So he was annoyed that I went to bed and he messages me and he goes, you drive me crazy. And I was like, what, why, LMFAO? He goes, there you ho, but he meant to say there you go. So then he'd put like asterisk go. And I was like, are you calling me a ho? And then he sent a picture of a gardening ho. And then he says, go to bed. And I was like, you. He was like, I'm trying. You should go to sleep and think about how you're driving me crazy and I'll ask you for answers in the morning. So I was like, okay, so you're not gonna invite me to make out with you and I'm not just gonna ask, so that's annoying and that's lame and I don't wanna play these games. Are we making out or not? And I was like, okay, I was gonna see if you wanted to make out, but good night. <laughs> like, I was like... After that, I was just like, this is so annoying. <laughs> And so I just shut my phone off, put it on do not disturb, and then I went to sleep. Cause I was like, this is so annoying, ugh, whatever. And then I guess he messaged me again and said, so are we going to sleep in the basement? Basically insinuating, hey, let's go to the basement and make out type vibes. But I fell asleep already. Cause it's like, girl, you have to, you have to be quicker than that. All right, you have to be quicker than that. So after I turned my phone on do not disturb and I was like, okay, this is annoying. I was like, all right, I take my makeup off. And then in my drunken state, I'm really proud of myself. I get up, I go into my closet. I pull out some Advil. I pull out my hangover vitamins. I pull out all of my essentials that I should be taking before I fall asleep. Instead of making out with Caitlyn's cousin, I am in the closet taking my vitamins and taking my Advil, loving myself and nurturing myself for the next day. So you know what? This is a good thing. And maybe I shouldn't make out with Caitlyn's cousin. Maybe I really don't want to do that, okay? Maybe I really actually don't want to do that. 
I'm just bored and horny. So, so then I wake up the next morning, I'm hungover because I was pretty lit, okay? I remembered that I was trying to make out with Connor, but it was kind of hazy. And I was thinking, I was like, oh my God. I literally messaged him and was like, are we making out or not? And I told Caitlin that and she was dying laughing. I was like, yeah, but then I fell asleep because he was being lame. He was like right in the room right next to me too. I was like, fuck, I'm supposed to hang out with him all day today. Knowing that we just drunkenly tried to make out but no one did anything. I was like, fuck, like this is gonna be so awkward, fuck. I was like, do I mention it? Do I make a joke out of it? Should I wait for him to make a joke? I was like, I have no idea how this is gonna work, but let's just go. It's the last day here. So let's just have a good time. Let's not overthink this, okay? So so <laughs> me and Connor are awkward as fuck. We're pretending like that didn't happen. I'm like, does he know that he messaged me that? Does he know that I remember that? Does he think that I forgot about that? We're just not gonna address it. We're not gonna address that we like wanna make out at some point. And tonight's like the last time we could. Are we gonna address that? Um, we just pretended like that didn't happen. Kind of awkward, but whatever. We all go shopping again. We all go to the city. We all just spend the day shopping. Me and Connor are awkward as fuck. Us just not knowing what the other person remembers. <laughs> so then after we went shopping, this was our last day in Dublin. The whole family, we were all leaving the next morning. We were all getting on a plane. Caitlin's family was going back to Boston. Me and Caitlin are going straight to Amsterdam. The whole family was like, okay, we need to have a great last night let's go to an authentic irish pub like a really authentic one where they play the authentic irish music and the irish folk are dancing like it's not gonna be a touristy thing you know and i was like let's freaking do it and also the vibes were still kind of weird so i was like maybe this will like bring us all together you know we can all have some fun because we haven't gone out with Caitlin's mom or aunt yet. Like we, we haven't all gone out. And so when we got to this authentic Irish pub, we were sober as hell, all of us were. There was an Irish duo playing authentic Irish music, you know, the jigs. <laughs> the jigs and the jags. <laughs> good and it was really lit but there wasn't a lot of people in there yet it was only maybe like nine o'clock and the sun doesn't go down till like 10 30 which is crazy that was one thing that i could not get used to um so there was barely anyone in there we're just drinking beers and at one point they kind of wanted to leave but i was like no no no, guys we just have to wait till the sun goes down it'll get turned okay remember when i said that my role was the vibe curator so i was trying to do that <laughs> I was really, really thankful because after a while, people started, you know, slowly coming in and the locals, the locals, they started showing up and they were getting rowdy. <laughs> And they were setting the tone, you know? I think it was because since we're not from there, we live in America, we just didn't want to get rowdy with no locals around. And then once the locals got there and they started to like turn up and get silly, we kind of started loosening up a little bit. And we're like, okay. Caitlin's mom loosened up a little bit. Me and her had a really great deep talk. And I haven't really talked to Caitlin's mom like one-on-one, -on -one, honestly, like ever. And so it was nice. So when the sun was completely down, Caitlin's mom and aunt were like, guys, we're gonna go, we're tired, we have a flight tomorrow, but you guys stay out, have fun. Just don't have too much fun because we do have a flight in the morning. I'm not even kidding you guys. As soon as they left, the kids, Caitlin's little brothers and Caitlin's cousin just went buck wild, balls to the wall, full on Irish. 
full on Irish. was oozing out of every single pore as soon as their moms left the establishment. They could be themselves. <laughs> they could be insane. <laughs> they could dance around. <laughs> they could sing. <laughs> they could scream. <laughs> They could just let it all hang out and let it loose. Because they were like, it's our last night, it's our last night, it's our last night. It was just the cutest thing ever to witness, if I'm being completely honest. Me and Caitlin felt like mothers, just watching our kids just let loose and have so much fun. We were having so much fun too, but like, we just loved watching them, especially the both of them graduating and they're starting new chapters in their lives. And it was just a very bittersweet, beautiful moment. It was honestly like the end of a movie. It truly felt that way for them. Not our movie. Oh my God. This is just the intro to me and Caitlin's movie, okay? But her family's movie, they're going back to America. Like this was just like the cute little like bow on top of their movie. And then of course there's a time difference change, obviously. And the Caitlin Clark game was starting and uh, I couldn't miss it. I haven't missed one of her games yet in her WNBA career. So I was gonna do everything in my power to figure out how to watch that in Ireland. I downloaded multiple VPNs, went with ExpressVPN, love you guys. And it worked like a charm and I was able to like get in and watch the game. And so I just set up my phone on the bar, would just like look over sometimes and then get crazy and then just keep looking over. And it worked out beautifully. I can multitask. <laughs> And then me and Connor bought these awesome hats at the bar and they're really cute. I look really good in it. It was just me and Connor at the bar after we bought these hats. <laughs> it was time. So I was like, do you remember us like trying to make out last night? And he was like, oh my God, I didn't know if you remembered that or not. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know if you remembered that or not. And he was like, oh my God. He was like, I was down, but you fell asleep. And I was like, I was trying to like, push you to ask me and he was like oh my god i like i wanted to and i was like you're an idiot you're an idiot and we were laughing so the tension between us today was real like we were both being awkward got it got it but then we squashed that beef and then we took some awesome pictures in our new hats <laughs> the best time you guys just everyone was just so happy irish people are so fucking happy and so lit and like they love their culture they love their country they have so much pride they just love to share the spirit and share the happiness with literally everyone like they didn't care that we lived in america they loved it they embraced us they showed us all these little jigs and dance moves and they taught us a bunch of songs and it was just so fun that was probably my favorite night of all of the nights. It was just the true, authentic Irish experience. That was just the cherry on top. So then basically we got home. We were so hammered. We all go down in the basement and we all watch another movie. No, no, no. We watched um, the Celtics game because it was the finals. Yeah. And they're obviously Celtics fans. I don't really care about the Celtics. I only watch WNBA. I literally do not care about the NBA. I don't care at all. I literally, I can't, I can't even name like five players. Steph Curry, LeBron James, eyebrow guy, 
Fucking, that's literally all I know. That are playing now. Obviously, I know the legends, but... Caitlin, again, is tired, so she's like, I'm gonna go to bed. So it's just me and the boys watching the game, giggling, gaggling. Me and Connor have this weird tension because we're like, are we gonna make out or like what? I was exhausted. So I was like, we do have to wake up early. So I do kind of want to go to bed. Uh, the night that we should have made out was last night, brother. It just doesn't make sense to make out right now. So while they were watching the game, I was like, okay. Good night, guys. Because they had a really early flight the next morning. So I was like, what? We're going to make out for a few hours and you have to go to your flight? Like, no, no. I just wasn't into it. And men's basketball doesn't really get me like. No. So I go upstairs, I'm getting ready for bed, and then he messages me again on Instagram, and I was like, oh my god. And he goes, SMH with your early bedtime. And I was like, ha ha, sorry. And he was like, I gotta stay up for the next three hours so I can sleep on the plane. And I was like, okay. And I just didn't respond. I'm not, no, I'm going to bed. You missed your chance. So I'm like, okay, so I close out of Instagram. He texts me like 20 minutes later and he goes, basement, let's go. And I read that and I was like, no. And then 10 minutes later, my phone vibrates again and then he exclamation points his message. And I was like, you missed your chance, my brother. And then I just put on do not disturb and then I went to sleep and then I woke up and they were gone. <laughs> so. so no, I did not make out with Caitlyn's cousin, probably for the best. Let's just not, Sarah. Like, do we have to make out with people's cousins? No, not at all. We woke up and everybody was gone. It was just me and Caitlyn. We had a later flight, so we packed all of our stuff. We had so much fun and I'm really grateful that they invited me on that trip. I hope they invite me to the next one. And Caitlyn's aunt and mom, I promise I will not make out with Caitlyn's cousin next time. Um, but yeah, so then we get on the plane and we are headed to Amsterdam next, guys. And when I tell you, it just gets bad shit insane from here on out. This trip <laughs> honestly left me in shambles and you will understand why it took such a long break because holy God, you guys are not ready for what you're about to witness and I can't wait to share it with you. Just buckle the hell up. I'm not sure when those videos will be out, still working on them. I'm gonna try to get it done in like two weeks but it'll be done soon. I'm not gonna take a fucking three month break again. These videos are already cooking. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already so you guys don't miss out on my next few videos where the journey continues. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're starting school, happy school year. Go study. Love you.